Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Inspection Whisperer Show. Again, I got Matt Braiding. Just a little secret. We didn't leave the room. We It's the same, same room, but part two of funny stories. He, he mentioned as we were getting up, he's like, man, I didn't get this funny story. And I'm like, well, <laughs> let's right, do it again. Let's record again. <laughs> we got this. So we had to refresh our beers, and you're still drinking your stout. I got to say, I did a new bottle, a new but bottle. the same same beer, yeah. Stout, and then I am going to go with this higher plane IPA. I am a fan of hazy IPAs. Yeah, hazy. they're they're fun. They're a little bit have a fruity taste to them, a little, little bit, a little, little juicy. Yeah, and you don't get that sharp that sharp IPA flavor. It'll look yeah. real cool in that glass too. Yeah, should, yeah. so I'm going to pour this. But going, this could go better or worse than the last one. Yeah. Or well, somewhere in between. The last one, I stepped on the cord. You know, the cord came out. Yeah. The camera turned off uh, three times. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's, yeah, we have nowhere to go but up, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So, we'll see. So as I pour this, how about you start your uh, first funny story? First funny story. All right. Um, I'll go dumpster fire. Okay. So uh, I was... Uh, Again, working with another agent that I work with frequently. And uh, cheers. Cheers. That Dink. was beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> it is be- a lot prettier than the other one. Yeah, if- it doesn't look like a beer. This one has a, yeah, this, a unique quality yeah, to it. It has a little bit of head yeah. on it. Has a You can see the haziness of the IPA yeah. and probably has a fruity taste to it. Too. I, would, I would imagine. Yeah. So working with an agent, work with her pretty frequently. She has an out-of-town buyer. Um buying this house in, a, in an old part of town, like a part of town that is known for flooding, although the house had never flooded. And it's true. Is it, things, is it says trying to reconnect. Does that mean we're cool? Um, I think we're cool. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, so yeah, supposedly this house had never flooded. It, it had original cabinetry, original looking flooring and stuff. So I believe that it never flooded. That's the only thing it had going for it though. This house was in really rough shape. It was really old. It was in an old part of town and it was really, really in rough shape. And so I was there for maybe about, you know, 30 minutes, you know, about 15 minutes inside, getting everything going and going through every room and shaking my head and then, then going outside, just, you know, walking the outside for 15, 20 minutes. Um, the, and just looking at the roof from ground level, like we're in real bad shape. There was real heavy vegetation and real high soil all around the property, cracks in the bricks everywhere. I mean, Foundation? I, I, I didn't see anything that really clued me into foundation problems. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think at the end of the thing, I wasn't saying, hey, we have foundation problems. I don't remember if I ran some zip levels on it or not. I, I can't remember, but, but I don't remember it having foundation issues, but like everything else, you know? And, uh, and, but I mean, like, I'm only about 30 minutes in and I'm like, God, it's just not really like what I, the inspections I've done for this realtor previously. And so I called her and I was like, hey, uh, you know, what were these people expecting here? Because this house is in really rough shape. And I, I use the term, this is a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, I want to stop. I know your story is good. So hold on. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. And this is a really important thing that I you bring up because we allow this in our company too as well. Because, to stop. Well, yeah. yeah, stop or just you need to understand your client's expectations. Right. Right. Like, so what if these people didn't know anything about anything and they just put in an offer and they've never been there? Right. So and th- it's good that you stopped and then you ask them these questions uh, because what what if you you, you, wa- you waste their money, right? Right. You know, we get paid well. And then I think part of being paid well is also caring for what that makes sure this house meets their expectations. Sure. And do they, did the, and you're trying to figure out, do they understand that this is going to be a dumpster fire? Exactly. You know, you know exactly. I mean, that was the nature of the phone call, you know, yeah. was to try to say, Hey, what are their expectations? Because this is going to be in real bad shape. That was exactly. And I've done that before. I've literally walked out of a house because it just wasn't. It was, it was so bad and I knew it wasn't what the client wanted. I called him and said, Hey, I found water falling out of the ceiling. Do you still want me to inspect this place? And they're like, no, but not in this one. This one wasn't that one. I, like I said, I'm a few minutes outside and I, and I called her and said, Hey, this thing is in real rough shape. And yeah, I, I specifically use the term dumpster fire and, uh, which, which, you know, it's really, I would only say that to agents and agents that I know very well. Like I'm not going to say that to the client and definitely not to the homeowner, but, right. uh, um, but I, 
I use that term and it's gotten brought up because of course this house is these houses like this come back to haunt you. And, <laughs> yes, uh, and they so do. it's like, uh, hey, so and so, remember dumpster fire, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's good to give them a name. Anyway, so uh so dumpster fire. And I go through it and it's just everything was wrong with this house. You know, everything. Plumbing, AC, yeah, yeah. electrical. It's just everything. Foliage, everywhere. Soil, I mean, I'm pretty water. sure it had a stab lock panel. It had, you know, the roof was garbage. There was uh, um, AC issues, plumbing issues, just the whole nine yards, yeah. right? And uh, and so this massive, ugly report comes out. And uh, and radio silence. Like, I didn't get, I didn't hear anything from it. I mm-hmm. sent it to, you know, and I sent it to the, the agent. I sent it to the, the client. And... Uh, um, didn't hear anything from them. And then, uh, um, which was surprising. Whenever I had so much, sometimes they might want to call you and be like, hey, I wasn't there. So what's this and what's right. that? But it never happened. And so uh, weeks later, like a month later, um, a lady calls me. Turns out it's the client's mom. They were moving in. The, the son bought the house. The mom moved in with him. And she's like, hey, so there's termites, you know, in my uh, dining room. And I was like, okay, well, they certainly were not there whenever I was there. Um, and she said there, she could see them hanging out of the ceiling. Now, I never verified this, mm-hmm. right? But, I mean, it could be, right? It very well could be them building a tube and falling out of the ceiling. Anyway. I got to uh, pause you one more time real yeah, quick. So, this is a termite fact. So, if y'all are listening, this is a really cool termite fact. Termites move two to ten times faster in a quiet building. Mm. So, if... They moved everything out of the home. It set vacant for 30 days. It kicks them into overdrive. Ah. So they were probably weren't there. I did not know that. Yeah. So go ahead. Well, I mean, they probably were there, but they probably weren't, they weren't in the ceiling. Um, They weren't visible. And, and, you know, one of the things that as, as a, a home inspector, as a termite inspector, the thing that we look at probably the most is the foundation walls, right. right? We're looking for the dirt tubes going up the foundation walls to see if there's any evidence of, of them in, uh, uh, entering the building through their dirt Plumbing tube. traps, yeah, window all that seals. Stuff. Anything yeah. that's accessible, right? Yeah. Well, almost all of that was inaccessible due to vegetation. And, and I mean, I'm not talking, I'll move vegetation. This was massive. Right. You know, this was like, you could not get to it. I tried to shove some of it around, but the dirt was uh, above the brick line. It was just impossible to see. So she calls me and she tells me this. And I was like, well, hey, and I pulled up the report and I refreshed my memory on all this stuff. And I go, hey, you know, last month when I did this inspection, all this heavy vegetation stuff was around there. You know, that really limits my visibility, which I put in the report. And she goes, yeah, we ripped all that stuff out. And I was like, yeah, well, about that, <laughs> it says in the report that, that stuff needs to be removed, and uh, and and when removed, if you find uh, wood destroying insects, they need to be treated. See, that's the reason why that kind of stuff is supposed to be done on the seller end, and you need to know as a buyer that you're taking responsibility for it past that. If you choose to not have it done, which they specifically did not want, right? They didn't want to have it done. That I, I talked, I, I called up the realtor, and I was like, "Hey, remember dumpster fire?" And she was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Hey, so she's calling about these termites and stuff." She goes, "Man, we." had an extensive conversation. They wanted nothing but money off of the house. They did not want any repairs. They wanted to negotiate no repairs. And I was like, okay. And I remember the conversation when I first called her about this house. I said, hey, you know, do they know what they're getting themselves into? And she goes, yeah, they wanted to fix her upper. And I go, well, they got it. <laughs> they got to fix her up. They got to fix her uh, up. And so, uh, so anyway, um, that goes on, right? And she was actually very nice about it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, um, I told her, I said, well, hey, here's the name of a, of a company that can get you under control. Because, I mean, she needs to get the problem handled. They need to get it treated. And now it's on them. Right. And so uh, – so she does that, I guess. And then a couple of weeks later or a week later or something, I get a, a nasty email from a lady. Now I never got her name. I didn't remember it anyway. And so, but I know who it is. Right. And I looked up the address. And I was like, yeah, this is the one. Mind you, this lady's not my client. Right. It's, but it's, it's like the mom or something, yeah, right? And yeah. she wasn't there for the inspection. I've never sent her the inspection report. So she starts going, I want to complain on one of your inspectors for your company. Uh, uh, well, I'm the only guy that works for the company. But anyway, so it was on me, right? Uh, he inspected a house for me, yada, 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 and missed so many very important things. So she started listing these very important things. Every single one of them were in the yeah. report as needing further evaluation or being at the end of their life. All of them. Right. And so uh, I, I kindly, you know, encouraged her to talk to her son about obtaining a copy of the report to find out what was actually listed in the report as needing repair. Um, uh, and then I never heard anything again. That's pretty good. That's that was a yeah. pretty funny story. I felt good about it, though, because even though she kind of complained, I'm glad she didn't go to Google with it. So, that would have been a, a pain in my butt, but. 
I, you know, the thing is, is like, you know, just trying to break down that story. Like, and I always take any complaint that happens in the business and I take it as a learning lesson. You're right. Even though you did your job, you're like, what can we learn from this situation? And the best thing to do is just like really reach out to the client, you know, and just even though they don't want to talk to you or just be like, Hey, I just want to let you know, like, there's a lot of stuff wrong with this home, you know, and that's, that happens to us quite often. Like, what can I do to fix this? But you know, that, that I don't have this one written down, but it reminded me about a story that happened with us. This happened two years ago. I think I was at the Tapria conference and this lady, uh, we did a home inspection. It was a seller, obviously. And the seller wrote, the buyer backed out of the home, obviously. And this is when the sellers normally complain, you know, after you've inspected and you, she's like, my sink, sink is now leaking. It caused all kinds of water damage. I was like, well, no, it was already leaking. And we have proof of that. And she's like, she's like, you need to come here and fix it right now. I was like, well, we don't have to because we have proof that it was leaking at the time of the inspection. And they, she turned around and she's like, well, I'm going to write a negative review. And I'm like, do what you got to do. That's literally what I said. I mean, I can't stop you. Right. Right. I'm like, do what you got to do. So she wrote the negative review and it's uh, how all we cause all this damage. So my response to her negative review was everything wrong with her house. <laughs> that probably isn't like... I don't know if that, that's definitely not normal. No, no, no the response right. from me. No, but it worked and she took it down. But I honestly wanted it to stay up. I felt like, what do you do whenever you go and look at a company, right? Most of the time, people will read a few positive reviews, but you're going to go straight to the negative. negative. Find out what's wrong. Yeah. You're going to figure out what's wrong in the company and how they responded to it. And man, my response was good. I was like, I was like, I am sorry that you feel this way about our company. You know, we, we, uh, uh, during the time of the inspection, you have holes in your roof, you know, you have mold, you have leaking, uh, you have leaking pipes underneath every sink, you're, you have galvanized water line, you know, like it was long. It was a real long. It'd be like, I'm sorry that we can't take care of all your problems it's for like, you. You don't even put summaries in your report, but you gave them a summary right there. Yeah, on I was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. We can't solve all your problems for you. And that's literally uh, what I said. And she took it down and I was so upset. And, um, yeah. So you were, you were talking about um, the, the negative review and, and I, it reminded me of the podcast you did recently with Michael Conrad. Okay. About, he said something like how. Was that there? Just because there's, that you missed something or whatever doesn't negate the entire inspection report. That I don't know a, why it brought, it, that jarred my memory about that. But that's a like, good line. Yeah. But that, well, yeah, it is right. Yeah. Because like, okay, yeah. I mean, everyone makes mistakes. We're human. So I mean, like we might miss something or whatever, but there's still a lot of very good, useful information in that report. A lot usually. Right. Um, and so uh, it, it, it just kind of reminded me of that because it was like, I mean, this person's upset about all these things or about this one particular this situation, but it's like, man, there's a hundred things wrong with your house. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's a little bit different than what Conrad was talking about, but that's what it. No, no, I think it of. completely relates because that is a problem in our in our industry. They're like, well, you don't have this, so what else is wrong in your report? Right, and they start. Like, I can see where they're coming yeah, from, you know. Yeah. And it's a very legal thing, and lawyers do it because that it, they need that they need that hole, you know. And then they're like, well, if he didn't do this, and what what else need to do? You just so, had to stand on your own two feet and go. That does not mean that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, look, just because you just because you, one thing was wrong doesn't mean you can't trust the entire report. This is not what that means. And and, yeah. and if you don't, if you feel that way, then here's your money back. So the you hit that money on on the, the good thing is the seller, and I don't have to give her her money. So right, right. That, not, in that but, case, you don't. Not no, this one. no, no. I completely agree. It's just, yeah, it's 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 tough whenever you're talking about that because it's like well, whenever we're doing a house that's really really bad, you're like, well, maybe I. Should and report on this because I have so much other stronger stuff. But in the end, you don't like you have to report on everything because, yes, the plumbing's bad, the AC's bad, the roof is bad, the foundation's bad. But you don't report on that corrosion underneath the P trap, underneath the sink in the hall bathroom. That's what they're going to call you about. Right. You know, and and I understand why they're upset. They're like, well, I could have negotiated on that. I'm like, yeah, you could have, but 
You wouldn't. Right. <laughs> you right. Know, it would have been. It just depends on the situation. Yeah. They teach us not to be exhaustive, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. But I mean, like, you ride a fine line between doing a really good, thorough job and being exhaustive. So, you know, I, I don't. You're right. There is a fine line between don't be exhausted, but like, I think technology has changed from when the rules have been written. So whenever I first got in the field, right. And even my father got first in the field, but I was taught, I mean, I was literally taking handwritten notes in like a digital camera and we we're implementing yeah, yeah, it in a, a tablet, like a regular a tablet. I have it over here. You know, yeah. I keep it in a regular tablet and that's how the report was written. But now we can store so many photos and we can store, create really detailed reports on a PDF that exhaustive is almost like hard to interpret. You know, it's easy now. I'm like, I can just snap yeah. 160 photos, drop it in a report and still be done in I four hours. To me, it comes to like, okay, so like you find, you know, caulking needed at Windows, right? Right. So exhaustive to me would be taking a photograph and and putting every single window okay. in there. I agree. And then, but like you can't do that, but you do want to take a representative number. Right. You know, what is that representative number? Really, really kind of depends on the house. I think to me it does. Like if there's, you know, three windows that have a problem, then I'll take a picture of all three of them. If there's 20, then I might take a picture of six or seven. It, and sometimes I get into a, a position where I just have to stop myself because like, okay, this one's small and I took a picture of it and this one's bigger and I took a picture of it and then I take a small one. Then I get on the other side of the house, they're all bad. Right. I don't want to go deleting the ones I already took because I don't want somebody to go, why didn't you take a picture of that one? So no. anyway, we have really taken a turn here. No, no it's, it's completely okay. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you that's where the gold is. I really do believe that. Like whenever we're doing a podcast and your goal is like, hey, I'm do funny inspector stories, but they're funny to us. But right. you know, anyone that's not a home inspector right. or a real estate agent or in the real estate field, they're probably not that funny. They're like, what are these two guys doing? They think they're hilarious. <laughs> we are. Yeah. We, oh, you're just telling them. Hey, no, we are. No, yeah, we're, we're funny. Really funny. Yeah, yeah. We, we are really Hashtag funny. Hashtag funny. <laughs> so whose turn is it? I, I don't know. I, you done? I oh. did the where did I leave off? I left off with the the complaint. So that I think it's your turn. It's my turn? Yeah. I don't know how much I can... Okay. All right. So I'm not sure how funny this is, except... Well, it's funny. Okay. It's going to be funny. <laughs> um, so funny this, level uh, six. <laughs> well, just maybe towards the end. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I did this house. Uh, it was a really big house in a really affluent area. And like it was on a lake. Um, and it was like... Uh, I, you know, it was really nice, but it's just a little bit older. Maybe Lake Conroe or no, uh, I think Houston. it was. Maybe it's like Woodlands. I'm not real sure. I can't remember. Um, it was up in that area. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of where I'm from. Right. And so I, I big, big house. And, uh, um, but it's about maybe 18 years old, something like that. Mm-hmm. And so I start inspecting this thing. And like I, when I got there, the, the owners were there and they were very nice, but, uh, um, it was a little bit awkward. Like, I don't know. The house was like sparsely furnished and, uh, um, and it was really hot. And it was just like, I, 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 I'm starting to get a trend with you where you're like, the sellers are present and it's awkward. Yeah. Well, it, it is not. <laughs> there's never a time that's, well, actually, I take that back. There's been times where I've had really good experiences with sellers. As a matter of fact, sometimes that turns into another inspection. I have a it lot always, of times oh, that turns into another always, man. I'm friendly with everyone. Be friendly because, uh, um, you never know. What you're dealing with, if you if you're doing a home inspection, look, having a homeowner present when I'm doing a home inspection is annoying. Okay, almost always. Yeah. Uh, I, nothing against them. It's just that it's a total invasion of privacy. I feel awkward doing it. They've got to feel awkward with me being there. Right. Um, and so so it's it's very difficult to be in that situation. You have to get your mind right because if you treat that situation right, it can actually turn into more business. They're probably moving. If they're moving in the area and they like you, they might hire you. Even if they're not, they might have a family member in the area and they're like, this guy did a bang up job on my house. That's literally happened to me. He found is, stuff that I didn't even know yeah, about. A guy yeah. called me and said, hey, you did an inspection on my house. It was great. And so I'd like you to do my new house. Right. And it's like, oh, awesome. Okay. And so, yeah, you always got to do that. Right. But, uh, but this was, this, th- these were one of those awkward moments where you just, no one really knew how to act here. Anyway, about, I don't know, 30 minutes in, they, they left, they all left. And so that was fine. Um, and I continued doing, but this house was rough. There was like, I swear there were shower pan leaks in every shower. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And then, but there were interior showers. So, so, like, the baseboards were all swelled up. That's funny. You know, 
I, honestly, I, I, I post all those videos on TikTok, yeah. all the shower pan leaks that yeah. we find. I think it might be a Texas thing or a Houston, Texas thing. I don't think anyone in Houston, Texas knows how to do a shower pan. I never find them. I found one like last week. Okay. But I never find them. Like very rarely do I find oh. shower pan problems. And I, I found them maybe, man, I don't know. It's a low number of times. Well, okay. Well, I mean, like you got to think about it, like uh, my numbers versus your numbers. So you got to think like maybe I find, you might find it five times a year, right? I, pr- I, I know I didn't find it five times this year. Oh, okay. Out of over 400 inspections, I think, I, f- I think maybe two or three. Oh man, I diverted you from your story. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the story. <laughs> yeah, the story. <laughs> the beer. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so... Completely trash. The house was just everywhere you turned, it was just a nightmare. Right. Both ACs didn't work. That's why it's hot in there. Um, and uh, the roof was in real bad shape. Just everything, everywhere you turn is in bad shape. In the kitchen, nothing worked with the microwave. Not one button. Uh, the microwave worked, but the oven didn't work. The The cooktop didn't oh, work. Oh, you said nothing worked. Nothing in the kitchen worked. But the, but mic- the microwave. Oh, okay. And uh, this is a really big, really nice house. It's a little older. It's in a really ritzy neighborhood. Like, uh, you know, people with a lot of money live out here. Right. And this house is just dilapidated pretty much, you know. <laughs> and, and they're just like microwaving whatever to eat dinner and stuff, I guess. Well, I so I get to inspecting the kitchen and find out that everything doesn't work. And I get to the cooktop. And it's like, you can't even touch anything. It's all covered in grease. Yeah. At some point, they've had like a pot of grease completely boil over. And and it must have been, you know, it wasn't like that day or anything. But all the controls, all the, I mean, I can't believe this didn't catch on fire. Right. All the burners. And it was one of those that had the uh, exhaust fan in the middle of the cooktop. It went through the exhaust fan and got all underneath the cabinet. Just grease everywhere. I, I just, you know, like, I, I, I know I'm diverting again. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I just don't know how it gets to that point. You know, like, you I know. know, I feel like I'm a messy person. I mean, like, look around my office. I mean, it, it, I have stuff kind of like all over the place, but like that. Take it easy. That's a, that's like messy. It was very bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the, the thing but, that the, the kicker about it, because I mean, it's not like that's a mm-hmm. very funny story. I mean, mm-hmm. it was, it was pretty rough, but, uh, but it wasn't like that was a very funny story. But, uh, the kicker about it was it ended up being an, Ex NFL player's house. Oh, really? It was yeah. a famous person. Yeah, it was a f- very famous person. I don't know if I can say his name. Should I say his name? Uh, no, I'm just leaving it off. Yeah, name? yeah, but it was a. It, it was rhymes with. No, I'm not saying his name. I'm yeah. saying his name. But uh, yeah, it was a football player, a, just, very, a very recent uh, uh, football player. And uh, um, and yeah, I mean, he I wasn't think, living there at the time. His mom was living there, I think. But uh, I think you hinted at it, though. It was a football player that's been in trouble in the past. So you can say that. You can say that? Yeah, we'll say that. What he said. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so yeah. Was, so you think to yourself, like, what happened to this? Is he run out of money or what? You know, like, I don't know what the deal is because this is a very expensive house. They're obviously yeah. selling it. I don't know what the purpose is of that. But man, I mean, these NFL players, they paid a lot of money. Yeah. You know. I do have a picture of him, though, and his family. <laughs> I can't, I cannot share it with you. Yeah. You know, I may I, or may not have that picture. I've always wondered that too. We've inspected s- some famous uh, basketball players' houses out here, and uh, their garages smell funny. You know, <laughs> but but no, I actually have a really good one. Yeah, we'll, we won't go into the we're digging on um, famous people. But whenever I was a one year old home inspector, I was when I was one years old. One, one years year old. old of home inspecting. I <laughs> ins- I inspected. Kelly Clarkson's house that she was selling. And it was with my father. My father was, I was just a trainee. Just to let you know, the house she was selling had like 64 zones of sprinkler systems. Oh. So she had a golf cart there and uh, my uh, my dad drove around in the golf cart and I was sitting there next zone, next zone, next zone. And we we knocked it out. I'm sure. The yeah, golf but, cart and all. but 64 zones. And even if you're only running every zone for one minute, that's a long time. That's an hour. Yeah. Like, and we only have so many hours that we can be there. You still have five AC units, but all right, whatever. But I, I take this kind of a pride moment and y'all can judge me if you want, but I pooped in Kelly Clarkson's house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to poop in Kelly Clarkson's yeah, house. Yeah. It was famous. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of a funny story, you know, like. I, I mean, how many of you can say you pooped in a famous person's house? Yeah. Literally. If you can say that in this 
uh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Drop in the comment section if you've done that. That that that's a that's an accomplishment in life. I feel like they should you win know? something. I, how can we prove it though? We wouldn't be able to prove it. You win I, nothing. I'm, but the funny thing about this shower, it was one of those showers that have like the toilet and the bathtub and the shower all in the same. Place. Did you take a shower too? I didn't. No, but I just always thought that was weird. No, it was a bathtub and a shower and the toilet was in a different room. So I didn't poop in the shower, but I I probably sat on the same toilet Kelly Clarkson did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Your butts have touched the same place. But but that being in, I was in the Marine Corps too, and I was in HMX-1 security, so which was the helicopter security. So I sat in the president's chair and flew in it a few times. But I feel like it's more accomplished that I pooped in Kelly Clarkson's well, house. I, mean, yeah, I don't know. Bear ass. So, I mean, yeah. yeah it's clo- I'm closer to her yeah, yeah. than I am the actual president. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's pants in between. There's pants. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. So that's the famous, wow. uh, the famous I, people I was story. doing an inspection the other day and somebody, we were talking about sh- uh, water pressure in the house and, uh, and they were like, uh, I said, yeah, yeah, the shower was really light or whatever. And they're like, the shower? And it was something about the way they said it. And my response was, I mean, I didn't take a shower, but I mean, like, <laughs> you know, it was, it was very light pressure. Like, I don't think, I think I said something like, it's never going to wash soap off you. I mean, I didn't take a shower to know, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I actually did run the water, and it's very light pressure. What else do we got? All right. So the next one, one of the things that we brought up in the previous podcast is we were talking about, you know, builders and like uh, how to deal with them. Oh, yeah. And I came into a situation last year, and it was with a builder. And I walk in the front door and I mean, it was a nice house. This lady was a doctor. Sorry. Uh, This lady was a doctor and she, you know, very educated, very smart. And the builder, as soon as I walk in the door, he's like, home inspectors. Sorry, it's a new build. uh, Home inspectors are just here to cause problems. That's what he said. That's what the builder said. That was the very first thing to come out of his mouth. But like me, I'm like, I was in the Marine Corps. So like, Nothing phases me. I mean, like, I've literally been called the worst of worst. <laughs> and so I'm just like, all right, I'm cool. I'm just here to do my job. And and she's like, hey, just ignore him. You know, just do your thing. I'm like, no, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it anyway. So I do the whole house. I found all kinds of weird little stuff wrong that she was very adamant. I mean, stuff that's important that can cause damage to the structure. Right. Like, there's no weather stripping or uh, shower door stripping on the shower doors. So, like... Water is just going to spray everywhere. But the biggest one is it had this massive, it was like six or 7,000 square foot house tile roof. And oh, no. there was no plumbing stacks or no plumbing lead jacks on any of the plumbing stacks. They just used like this. Open? Like they use this flex seal or something on it. I don't know. It was like some sort of liquid flash. I couldn't tell, but it was it was definitely wrong. And I was like, all right, well, hey, you have no, the builder stayed there the entire time. I was like, hey, you have no plumbing jacks on your property. And he was like, well, he's like, that's allowed. See right here. But they didn't like bend over in. It was just, I was like, no, it's being held together by caulking. It's like, this is definitely not right. And he was like, no, it is right. And he's like, what do you, he's like, have you ever built a home? And I was like, I was like, no, I literally just do home inspections all the time, every day. And I look at roofs every day, all day, forever. And I've never seen a house with no lead plumbing jacks. And, and then he was like, I'm like, what do you, what'd you do before your building? He was a math teacher. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't have to be a license to be a, a builder. Right. And so, and so he was like over here causing me saying I'm here to cause problems, but his previous career, he was a math teacher and he's over here beating up on me. But anyways, so I, I literally checked him. Ridiculous. I was like, how come your house in the whole neighborhood is the only one without lead jacks? And he's like, he's like, I'm not changing it. I'm like, fine, I'll call the manufacturer. And just to let you guys know, if you are doing inspections and the builder is saying they're not going to fix anything, they're not going to do it, just call the manufacturer and they have regional reps that will go to the house. They want their products installed properly. They want it done correctly. Because they're going to get brought in if there's a lawsuit. Right. Yeah. If there's a lawsuit or something, the roof is leaking, they have warranties in place. And the warranties only go into place if the product is installed 100% correctly. Right. Yeah. So if it's not installed correctly, they're not going to warranty it. And that's what I told her. And the it was boral. The roof was boral uh, tile. And 
the rep, the regional rep drove out there and was like, yeah, you're wrong. And the, the roofer and the builder were calling me wrong. And uh, I've never installed a roof. I've never built a house. Doesn't mean anything. Wrong is wrong. wrong I, know is read, wrong. I, it, I know how to read a manual. That's right. all. I read a manual. Manufacturer uh, instru- installation instructions, that is everything. It supersedes if, code. Yes. Right. So, yeah. if, if the, if the in- installation for this product it says it should be done this way, that trumps everything. Everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just to let you guys know, if you are installing, if you're inspecting, don't go to the code. Go to the manufacturer. manufacturer yeah. Always the manufacturer. The manufacturer is always w- way above code. Code is so minimum whenever you're really thinking about it. The code is it literally is. written. It's like, it must be installed in a manner to shed water. Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, codes and yeah. the standards of practice are a absolute minimum. And, yeah. and, you know, we strive to do it. It's best to strive to be a little bit better than that. But I think like what you were trying to say was like how to deal with builders. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, how to deal and with And so them. like – I uh, never argued with them. So I never that, – yeah. that's, that's, I think that's the thing. You know, when we tend to tell these stories and get a little bit like, well, I oh, said yeah. this. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I mean the, the truth <laughs> is um, – and I do it too. Yeah. But uh, – yeah, the it truth, sounds the more truth is to try, the story. The yeah, the when when you try to get your point across, and uh, they will they will usually not listen a great deal, but get the information in the report. Pull those manufacturers' installation right. instructions. Drop pictures of them in your report, and and go at it that way. At the very least, if the builder says. This is how we do it, and we believe this to be okay, and they convince the client that that is fine. Then the client has a written report saying it was wrong and they chose to not address it. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to say is like, I never argued with him. I never did anything. I just said, I'm going to present you with facts. You know, I'm like, all right, it's fine. I'll go to the manufacturer and we'll figure out what is right because I'm 100% being okay with being wrong. I learn something new every day in the home inspection industry. I go out something new. I'm like, wow, that looks weird and different. I just go look at the manual and I bring it. It to him and uh i brought i brought the manual to him and i told him it was wrong and he still and i was like all right well i know there's always someone above you that can get in the regional managers that's what they do they, that's what they do for a living and they they come out there so and he was yelling at me at one point in time and i never responded <laughs> yelling doesn't mean anything to me right. you know like and i was just like i was like hey man you're really mad right now I'm literally just reading from a book. That's all I said. I was like, I was like, and then he calmed him down. I was like, I'm just following the rules. I'm like, that's my job is to find the rules. And I found the rules and it's up to you to decide how to solve the problem, not me. Well, and they've and, got some damage control to do too, because just like we were talking about, like how, like you're, you know, finding a mistake in a report can cause a client to say, well, uh, is the entire report credible at this point? Right. The same thing happens to these builders at a build. So it's like when you point oh, yeah. out these issues and you find out that they've got a problem with the roof that they don't think is a problem and they should watch themselves before they, 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 uh, you know, make a fool of themselves because mm-hmm. the client's usually involved in this at some point And they, if they witness that and say, okay, well, you, you didn't do that right. How do I know you built the whole house right? Well, exactly. I guess that, yeah, you're right. It's a slippery slope. 100%. Like just like. If the windows aren't tape flashed properly on that last uh, mm-hmm. podcast we did, did w- w- what does that mean? Does that mean that you didn't frame it properly? Does the roof not done properly? You know, right. so yeah, so it leads them down this rabbit trail. No, the and house is framed. Most properly. people know very little about building houses. Right. So once you tell them, they expect a new house to have no problems. That's never the case, but um, they expect a new house to have no problems. And so when you tell them that there is a problem, they get real nervous. Oh, you yeah. Know? Um, and especially when you tell them it's, it's a semi-major problem. <laughs> you know, the builder needs to watch how they handle that. But, I mean, like, it's really not up to us to tell them how to do it. We just bring facts to the table, and uh, and then it's up to them to uh, do their own damage control. Yeah, so the gold nugget about from this story that I was mainly trying to get to was, like, a lot of it, I feel like inspectors and the reason why we have this builder and home inspector feud out there is because a lot of inspectors give opinions. And I never, I never, ever give an opinion. It's just, uh, hey, I don't know. I don't know the exact rules. I'm going to go back and look and just go to the manufacturers, pull up the facts, cut and paste. They don't care that you use their manuals or brochures. Right, right. Cut and paste it, throw in your report, and you're good. The argument's over. There is no argument anymore. You literally are just presenting them with facts. That's it. 
I, uh, I had a builder recently um, that they were missing. Now, this was on, on, on the other hand, I ended up, you know, the client was there and the uh, um, builder was there. And this was at the end of the inspection. And I found a handful of things going mm-hmm. on with this property. And it was one of those things where this was very recently. And, you know, around this time of year, a uh, few weeks previous to this, especially builders are trying to crank these houses together because they want to get them done and closed for the end of the year. Oh, it's intense. Can and, I pause you yeah, one sure. second? Yeah. So I was doing a phase one inspection the other day and I asked the the engineer, I'm like, how many are you doing these a day? He said 30. Insane. Insane. I can't, it takes me two hours to do one. Yeah. Like, so like 30, like what what is he doing? He's like, Yep, it's here. Yeah. And then he drives to the next one. Like, you got to think, like, drive time alone. Like, how do you do 30 houses a day? <laughs> yeah, clients are, are, are relying on their project manager and builder representatives to um, keep track and make sure the trades are doing a good job. <laughs> All they've got time to do is make sure they show up. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's really not their fault. And I'm seeing more of a trend nowadays where builders seem to be a little bit more happy to have us there. Right. Because, it, look, it's their interest, too. When we find things that are wrong, they can address it right now before it causes problems with their client. Um, it's If if they uh, uh, battle us on this kind of stuff, it does nothing but cause problems between them and their client. But right. it's like having us there, there's nobody else there to check them. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're not going to do it. And so it is good. And I find a lot of builders that actually do enjoy having a home inspector around. This particular case was, was that was how it was for me. Well, yeah. Well, he, uh, uh, this, this particular case, this builder was seemingly happy to have me around. They were trying to cram all this in at, at the last minute to get everything done before, uh, so they could close, you know, on time before the end of the year. This particular builder, they were shutting down shop before and giving everybody else Christmas. Like it's an unheard of thing, but mm-hmm. they were literally shutting down shop about two weeks. And so they were really trying to cram everything in. And so they ended up doing their builder walk and my inspection at the same time simultaneously. Oh, wow. That's kind of weird. That's not normal. I actually, I don't mind the builder walk. I don't the, mind it. The blue tape walk and yeah. us there at the same time. It, like it, it happens. It's just, it's not exactly the best thing for the client because mm-hmm. the best thing for the client is to have a performance-based inspection come back and then tell them all these things are wrong. And then in the builder walk, the builder can tell them how they address those items and the blue tape walk be strictly cosmetic um, oh, or okay. mostly cosmetic. That's, I think, ideally to get the best value for your home inspection. That's the place. So where you're saying lie. like maybe three days before the the blue tape walk. Yeah, through. yeah, a couple of give enough time to uh, um, uh, call, to fix whatever problems that we find. You mm-hmm. know, even a day or two, they can get things done real yeah, fast. Yeah, they get it done. In, um, yeah, they, but just they have a lot of power. You know? Right. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. usually there. They can call an electrician, be there in five minutes. You know, they can usually handle stuff uh, pretty quickly. So, so yeah, a few days. Uh, but, but with, you know, with, with all that being said, um, we go through this and there were things that came up, you know, mm-hmm. and, and everybody was there in the same room at the same time. So if I found something that, you know, needed some attention, I'd make sure to let them know. And we were all good. And, uh, and of course, there's a lot more in the report that uh, didn't really get discussed. Right. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, I expect sometimes I get a call from the builder later on or whatever. And I, I thought that, you know, that could easily see, happen. See, there are good builders oh, out yeah, there. Totally. But so, the, the, the biggest thing is, is like that they don't make for as good a story. Well, okay. <laughs> That's well, so this, sad. Well, though, you know, right? Well, here's the deal. This actually works pretty good on both both ends because uh, um, right before I was leaving, right before I was about to finish up the inspection, I go and I grab my ladder reluctantly because I hate those little attic hatches that are in these weird oh, yeah. spots of the house. In the garage. Uh, yeah. Not yeah. just sometimes this one was up in a front bedroom hallway. Yeah. You know, and it's like I... I didn't know it was there until I got to doing the, the lower level of inspection. So it was like, I got to go get my ladder. Mm-hmm. But I, I always go in these because there is inspection gold in there a lot of times. <laughs> what, like not insulated yes. or, you know, open wires. You uh, know, just- I found a, um, a, a uninsulated uh, refrigerant line that was just twisted and mangled. No. Yes. Oh. I got pictures of it. <laughs> um, I've found all kinds of stuff up there, you know, uh, um, and, and, but really insulation is a big one. Mm-hmm. And this particular one was that. So here I am with the client and the builder, and I go up in this hatch, and the entire front bedroom, bathroom, and hallway, no, no insulation. insulation. None. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you're looking at a problem. Whenever you look at the ceiling and you can see ductwork running down and there is no insulation, it's oh, like, man. that is a room, man. Uh, and so uh, anyway, so I get down out of there and I go, huh, interesting. It, you know, it, I had to just tell him right then, you know, and I was like, hey, 
so there's no uh, insulation in the, over over this area. And he was like, what? That's <laughs> yeah. a big deal, you know? Yeah. So it's like instant credibility. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he's like, okay. And I'm at the end of my inspection report, but it's like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. So he, he did, I don't think he ever felt like he had a, a leg to stand on. Right. But he did call me that, that afternoon with a couple of issues. One was something kind of silly uh, and then uh, um, explained it. And then the other one was about flashing over windows, uh, like uh, you know, when flashing. he was in Hardy and yeah, yeah. he was missing the overhead flashing. And he goes, hey, we do it this way and we do it that way. And I go, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I dropped the, man- the, the manual in there just so that you can see, look, you know, as long as everyone, if your client's okay with that, and that's how y'all do it, I get it. It's how you do all these homes, but this is how it's supposed to be done. So this is in the report. So I did exactly what we talked about. Yeah. Drop it in there. Now the client has it in writing saying that it was wrong. So if it leaks. Right. Uh, and he was really nice about it. And he did tell me, he goes, man, you know, I got to say, it's a pretty thorough report and looks pretty good. And you didn't focus on the frivolous things like, uh, um, like not putting splash blocks down and stuff like some of these other reports. And I go, well, the house didn't have gutters, but if it did, I would have told you to put splash blocks down. <laughs> and he goes, oh, man. I was like, oh, what, what do you do? It's wrong. See, but actually, what I like about this story, though, is honestly, like, there, why why does this aggression happen? You know, like, as soon as I show up, I literally, I don't have myself any superior than they do. And they, but yeah. they automatically, sometimes they have automatic superior, they think they do, over us. And I'm just like, hey, our end goal is exactly the same our end goal is like you We're on this together. you want your cl- a client your client that you're building a home for to end up in a home that is well built as much as possible yeah. right like that that's your goal so if that is your goal to get the client in the house properly why why are we having all this tension you, you know Completely what I mean? Agree. Like, yeah. So uh, I feel like whenever I first got in the field, uh, the tension was there with the agents and stuff. And uh, the We're going live on, yeah. two, on oh. several different levels. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like the, the, there's tension with agents and stuff. And I think that's dissipated over the past eight years because now it's just accepted home inspections are there and they're there to stay. But with the new build inspections, especially with how far it's being built, it's they're still reluctant. And like you said, some are actually really happy where you're there. And then some hate us. The trend is going that direction. And I, I feel like you're right. Like the happiness is starting to come into play. So I just give it about, you know, eight more years before it's just a thing. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it definitely seems like, so in, on the real estate agent end of things, you know, they're mm-hmm. definitely encouraging things. Some of your older agents, maybe not so much, but, uh, um, uh, you know, millennial agents, 100%. It's like, yeah. they want the homes. They don't, they, there's liability on their end too. Whenever there's something goes wrong, everyone's going to get brought into it. So they mm-hmm. don't want that either. So, you know, I, I did one recently that, uh, um, was uh, a house that had been inspected in October, mm-hmm. and I did it, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, and the agent was like, "Look, I know that they just had an inspection in October, but I mean, I just can't, in good faith, tell them to get the house based on that inspection report without hiring somebody themselves." I mean, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's only a few hundred bucks. And, uh, and so, and, and I did it. And guess what? I found a leak in a wall that the previous inspector did not find. It, in the property, you know, it's not even the uh, other home inspector's fault. That's, no. It, it's the. Maybe it wasn't there. Yeah. The house changes constantly. And you're right. It may have not even been there. So, and this is actually a joke that I've been using quite a bit. Uh, one of my inspectors, his name's Brendan Hershey. And he, he told me this. What, What's two things an inspector can agree on? One thing an inspector can agree on. Two inspectors in a room. What's one thing they can agree on? Well, I don't, you're going to have to say it. The other inspector's wrong. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> that's it. I mean, like, that's it. So I you couldn't know, think of anything. So. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, you could even think of what, you know, we're, we have different ways of reporting. We have different ways of doing totally. inspections. We have different ways of calling out certain things. And this even happens in my own company. Like, like, Hey, would you call this out? And he's like, well, I don't know. And I'll be like, well, I would. And then, but the thing is, is just like, I don't say my word is, you know, God, you know, I let them do their job. They do a really good job. And, you know, 
just realize that we're all different and our end goal is always the same. Right. Yeah. So, I can dig that. So I have a builder story real quick. Do it. And this one's pretty short. It's not as uh, long as yours, but it's really funny. So like we did a home inspection and I came back for a re-inspection just to make sure they were doing, they fixed everything. And we had like a leak around a window or something. So they had to reset a window. And I told them, I was like, hey, when it rains, just give me a call back. I'll swing by real quick and scan the window. So I scanned the window after a rain and I had no water penetration, but I had a big red square, right? Like in, in the infrared camera. So it means it was hot outside. Right. So uh, I was like, well, I was like, there's no insulation here. And then the builder was like, so you're saying that camera can read behind the wall. And I was like, well, no, it doesn't read behind the wall. It reads temperature difference. And from my experience, if the whole wall is 70 degrees and this wall is 100 degrees, there's a probability that there is no um, insulation there. And he's like, so you can't tell me if there's no insulation there. I was like, it's highly unlikely that the insulation is there, but I cannot prove to you unless we open it up that the insulation is there. He got so mad at me. He was like, no, there's insulation there. I'm like, it's probably not there. You know, that's that's like the conversation that's going right, on here. Right. I'm maintaining my cool. I really don't care either way. I'm just going to report it. No insulation. He gets out his knife. He cuts like a, a pocket gi- knife. Yeah. Like cuts a giant X. Cause I point, <laughs> cause I have a laser pointer on my, my uh, infrared camera. A giant X where it is and punches a hole through the wall <laughs> and there's no insulation oh, there. And I was like, <laughs> that's it. You know, I'm done. Okay. So is that where you thug life and thug no, life use the place I, I, and you what, grab your backpack yeah, and leave? Yeah, what you did on the last episode, I was just like, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say I told you so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I didn't I just turned off my camera, I put it away, and I'm like, I just, I didn't even say, I was actually nervous to say anything. What did he say? He didn't say anything either. He just, he was just mad, you know, like he he was just mad. And I was like, the best thing was just the silence and the, and the, and the, the, the buyer was there too. And he was just like, thank you. And I was like, you got it. And I just left, you know, like, I didn't know what to say. You know, so it was stressful. That's great. Was, because what if he punched through the wall? <laughs> the insulation. And then, and then there was insulation. Like, was, I don't know. I, yeah. yeah. He still, you, you still have to fix the wall. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. That's still your problem. So coming close to the end of the podcast here real quick. Um, one thing I, I'm going to sidetrack you. You're going to get caught off the road. Whenever I was on the road all the time, I was terrible. I'm terrible at eating. How do you eat on the road? Okay, so I try to, for the most part, control what I eat, mm-hmm. and uh, um, I spend more time in homes than I should, and so I find myself. And plus, my average time. What's your average time? Four hours. I'd say um, that's, that's uh, all right. Yeah. You know, and then trying to get the report out in time. And sometimes, depending on the age of the house or, or or the awkwardness of the house, maybe I don't even get the report done in that time. But most of the time, I do. Um, but uh, um, but so. It, logistics is always the thing, right? Because I can be like in this area mm-hmm. and then have to get to Conroe, right? And so whenever I spend four hours in a house, you only have an hour right. drive time, yeah. Um, so, so like you know, you got you got to eat and run, and so for two reasons: because of time situations and because of uh, um, I try to regulate what I eat and try to for health reasons I try to eat you know mm-hmm. as right as I can. Right now, that ain't happening. Okay, after the first of the year. I'm going to get back on that, but right now <laughs> it is fair game. Everything's fair game. Whatever. Whatever's, yeah, on, the whatever. Road. whatever's on the road. Uh, and so, yeah, you just pick up food and, and eat. But I mean, like, you know, honestly, sometimes even stopping to find a place is, is hard when right. you don't know where you're at. Right. Um, and so, uh, and, and I found myself in situations where all I want to do is stop at the very first place I find that's on the right. And there's not one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'll drive an hour to get somewhere, be ravaged, starving, and then still right. have to go out of my way and then find time to eat and be late. So anyway, this was all going on. I said, this can't happen. <laughs> so I started bringing my lunch with me most of the time. Right. Um, and most of the time, and I mean, yeah, it didn't take long to eat, man. If it's no. there. Yeah. And, and, yeah, you, you know, got in the lunch box. It's cold or whatever, minutes. you know, but yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, 10 minutes or whatever. And sometimes I end up having a, a lot of time on my hands because of that, because the logistics don't always come into, I, sometimes I have two real close to each other, two yeah. 1500 square foot yeah. houses within 20 minutes. You can't plan it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got, you know, an hour and a half to eat That's my favorite day, by the way. Yeah, heck yeah, man. I do that every day. <laughs> uh, even the weekends. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody would be a home inspector if that was a thing. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, you know, I've been, uh, you know, I followed this guy on Instagram. Did you ever watch Big Brother? 
or The Amazing Race or anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. He did. Do you remember uh, some contestants named Cody and Jessica? Oh, no, he was I don't watch it. Yeah. I thought you might. And they're from mm. the Dallas area, or okay. at least they're living there now. Mm. Um, and so, uh, um, he wrote a fitness strategy book called The Last Fitness Strategy. It's a weight loss book. It's like 10 pages. You can read it literally. You could oh. fin- you could have read it three times while we were doing this podcast. What's it called again? The Last Fitness Strategy. Okay. And uh, um, and it's basically just – it's a real simple read and a real simple uh, strategy to just lose fat. Anyway, I've been following his uh, – um, his Instagram handle is Cody the Marine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd like this guy. And uh, um, I've been following his deal for a little while. And so I was taking – it was the – it's just tuna and like, you know, cheese and and like Miracle Whip or something. It's not exactly awesome, mm-hmm. but it's like it's a bowl of food, a fuel ready to go. So mm-hmm. I can just eat and get on there. And I find like that, that eating like that is better for, for my body and – Definitely gives me a lot more time and I'm not stressed out because I just have food. Right yeah, there. I can could, just eat that as I'm driving if I need to. Yeah, because as a home inspector, you're always regulating stress, I feel like, because there is a lot of stress that happens with this job. And you're right. And time is the number one stressor in the job. So, yeah, like if you can remove that huge portion of just eating. I just remember whenever I was in the field all the time and I, I just recently, one of my inspectors got sick and I was in the field and I was Figure just, again. and I was figuring out, I'm like, God, I'm starving, you know, and I'm like stopping at Whataburger and I was like, I can't be doing this anymore. I'm like, when I was in my twenties, it's like no big deal. You Whataburger every day, yeah. you know, now like I'm in my mid thirties and it's just like, you can't do that. Like yeah. your, your body hates you whenever you do that. So just, yeah, I like that. I'll look them up and uh, not that I'm, that is actually one of my goals is just 100% step out of the field and just work on my business uh, coming up this, this next year. I made a mistake because I, I, I crave it. You know, I enjoy doing home inspections and I enjoy client satisfaction. I love drilling into stucco yeah. and then, but also I have a business and people that rely on me. And whenever I do that, things get neglected. Right. And, but anyways, so the story is, is make, pack your lunch. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. how I do it. Yeah. That's the answer. I yeah. always give you the long version, yeah. but, uh, but you would like Cody the Marine. Uh, um, uh, that that strategy is pretty good because it's not like it's, it works really good, I think. And I haven't really died. I'm going to do this at the first of the year. I'm going to go all in mm-hmm. um, and, and try to lose weight with it. But if I think it's a really, when I was doing it kind of like I was like taking the weekends off or whatever, uh, cause that's kind of how I roll. Um, you know, drink whatever I want, eat whatever I want on the weekends and then get back to it. Yeah, when Monday I was Friday, doing yeah. that Monday through Friday, I was actually maintaining very well. I wasn't losing though. His whole deal is like, if you do this, you'll lose. Mm-hmm. And I needed to lose, but I wasn't, but I was maintaining very well. Right. So I'm going to go all in for about two weeks, lose the weight that I need to lose. It's supposed to be pretty rapid. Right. And then, uh, and it's like, it's not keto and it's not ad yeah, or anything. Just it's just basic. It's high food. protein, yeah. uh, lean, and just, uh, you know, do this and you'll lose weight. And so I'm going to do all that and, and get back into the gym and stuff like that uh, in, in 2021. I know it's not a, it's not a resolution. It's just like this is what I'm going to do. Just go, yeah. The, and that, I always hate the the word resolution. I feel like the word resolution is tied to, with failure. You know, like I like just saying this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, this is what I'm going to do. Like rolling in, you're coming close to the end of the year. You know, my next year, my plans are yeah. to hire two people, get out of the field, only fo- focus on working on the business and HIW. And yeah, you know, you just and go to the gym, you know, that's really what I'm going to do. Make resolutions as much as like, I think that the new year is a good time to start a new uh, thing, right? right? Because it's kind of a clean slate. It's not necessarily... The, the, the only reason why I feel like it, it's a good time, I guess, is because we're coming off the holidays and the holidays are really tough to regulate any part oh, of your yeah. life. Yeah. Work, food, family, any of that. Yeah, yeah. It's all complete chaos during the holidays. Mm. After that, you can kind of start to get a handle on things a little bit. Right. So that's, that's, yeah, not as, as much as a resolution, resolution as I'm just, this is what I'm going to do because it's the right time. Nice. All right. Cool. So I think we're going to end it there. Is that, right. is that good? You got anything else? I don't think so. All right. So we're going to stick around for part three. Yeah. Part three. (laughs) How do they fall? How do they find you? Oh yeah. Um, so, uh, Oh wait, I did want to mention one other thing. And it's one thing getting into this with you and doing a couple of podcasts. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to say I thought it was silly, but, um, I never really, my, my whole social media, uh, presence has been find realtors, 
for work. That's it. You know, like yeah. I wasn't really interested in like getting to know home inspectors. I mean, besides Realtors yourself, equal yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> money, food, money, get, just get that, you know? Yeah. And so that was my, my only goal. And, uh, um, and you know, you have been uh, a driving force in my social media since I started, I really didn't have anything going on. I think on. I was You're the kind of, one that made you, it was like, you, go, you were go like, record, do this, go you know? record a video. Yeah. yeah it's made uh, a difference for me. Go do this. And I, uh, my first video is so awkward, but, uh, but I ended up find that. It's not it. awkward. I don't know if you, if you could go back and look at it. He's holding his shirt over a uh, condenser. Oh well, that, it's not my first one, oh. but yeah, um, but yeah, that that one was. You're like, fun. hey, if warm air is blowing into your shirt, you're okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, that was that was funny. Me, and my sister, she, my sister, and all takes photo photographs for me. I got me, you and distracted. We, we got we get really silly with our photos. But yeah, yeah, I'll post that one again too. But no. Um, so I really did not get into this thinking that I would like reach out to, to uh, uh, home inspectors and stuff. But I've had a lot of people uh, uh, call me or email me, uh, uh, message me uh, mm -hmm. based on our podcast or, or something like that. And to ask me either inspection questions or just say, hey, like in the videos and stuff like that. And I'm finding it to be it's inspiring. I like that people are enjoying it. So it keeps me going. Right. Um, I, I find that people are finding it a little bit educational. So that's fantastic. I love giving back. I've learned from you and other inspectors. I like being able to provide that. I didn't right. ever look at myself as ever being that type of person. So anyway, it kind of changed for me. I've, I've uh, made a, a whole lot of new uh, acquaintances on social media. So thanks, you guys. That's a uh, pretty awesome, um, and uh, you know, look forward to keeping in contact with you guys. Yeah, I, so that's awesome, man. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it is kind of rewarding just giving back. Yeah. You know, and honestly, this industry needs it. You know, a lot of people don't understand like how new this industry is, and so like there are a lot of bad home inspectors out there, but they don't know they're bad. That's the thing. Like, so if whatever we do, we talk about how we report things, how we deal with certain situations, or even our funny stories, the gold nuggets in there. If that just betters the industry. I mean, that that's pretty cool. Sure. I mean, like we could manipulate the whole idea of like how we report and how we deal with builders or how we deal with agents and just be like, just be friendly. Yeah. You know, like that, that's our whole goal. Customer service, friendliness and do a good job. Then you, it equals money. And then also better clients, you know, better products and better understanding of like how home inspectors operate, I guess. Do you think I've gotten a subscriber since we've been on this? I don't know. Let's look. I'm going to look. I bet He's, you it's still 14. No. Someone oh, subscribe channel. to Matt Braiding right now, if you can. Oh, you got like one second. It's only because I'm not tied into his Wi-Fi. <laughs> look, so anyway, uh, you guys, you can find me, Texas Edge Ins Home Inspections on uh, uh, Facebook, texas.edge.inspect on Instagram. I don't even know how you... you I have like a title on YouTube, but if you just look up Texas Edge Inspection, Texas Edge Home Inspections, you can find me. Nice. Uh, and if you want to find all my old bands material, I got to you know, <laughs> I, I do have a bunch of uh, videos of my old bands. Nice. Yeah. I used, yeah. To, I used to be a musician before I was a uh, home inspector. But honestly, man, thanks for uh, joining. And then also just following that, you know, that coaching program. It just, it made me realize that uh, it's not a fluke. It's actually a system and it, and it works. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So we'll wrap it up there and uh, make sure that you like and subscribe on the YouTube videos. And then 14. always- oh, Still 14. You didn't subscribe. You disappoint me. Yeah. And make sure you like and subscribe the videos. Follow uh, Matt Braiding if you can. And just support your local home inspectors, even if you are another home inspector leave comments on the videos because that is the only way that the community will grow. It's okay that new people come in. It's the thing is, is we want to make sure that they're good. So we, everyone, it betters the market, you know, it betters the uh, environment of home inspectors. That's right. I'd say. The industry. Yeah. The, the industry. Betters the industry. Good stuff. All right. Thanks guys. Thanks. Follow us on the next one. Catch us on the next one. See you, See you later. Bye.